Welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, Thierry Bouchot, our uh, speaker at this year's IFTA conference, our first online 24-hour conference. Uh, Thierry, wonderful to have you on our IFTA uh, YouTube interview. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Me too. I'm very, very pleased to, uh, to, to be there with you. Uh, Thierry, we, we've, we've spoken over the years as, as uh, industry colleagues and friends and it, please, for, for those that are maybe uh, meeting you for the first time, if you could share um, a little bit of information as to uh, what you do right now uh, within the industry. So what I'm doing, I'm CIO of uh, Equal Capital. Uh, Equam Capital is a small asset management company, uh, which is a quantitative uh, asset management company. Company, and we are specialized in um, in uh, risk factors. So we have, let's say, three uh, key convictions. The first one is that there are a lot of uh, behavioral uh, bias in the market. And this uh, behavioral bias uh, represents opportunity for uh, investors. The second conviction is that uh, we think that it, there is a lot of value to mix a quantitative uh, analysis with a fundamental analysis, which is what we, we, what we name the quantum mental analysis. And the third uh, conviction is the fact that uh, uh, um, machine learning uh, is a very uh, powerful uh, tool uh, to improve and to, to make uh, all the quantitative uh, analysis much more robust than uh, it can be otherwise. And at the end, the objective uh, of uh, Equal Capital is to outperform the market uh, with less risk meaning less volatility. And, and very exciting space in terms of uh, uh, actual having, actually having skin in the game and managing money, uh, but then also using uh, a, a relatively newer uh, strategy like factor analysis to actually uh, build up um, that edge. And, and just to add to that, um, Thierry, of course, I'd like to mention the point that you also uh, are originally a, a very much a classic technical analyst um, and a co-founder of uh, the AFAT Society. It, it, for, for, for the IFTA audience out there, um, a, a little bit about that and how that has influenced your work. Yes, of course. Uh, it is. Um, it, it uh, let's say it's always a mix of uh, uh, classical education uh, from uh, the academic. Um, but also uh, a very pragmatic uh, analysis of markets. And let's say probably we need uh, to mix both uh, in order to understand how markets uh, can behave, but also to, to have models to, to be able to uh, modelize uh, the, the, our quantitative tools. Um, but let's say, uh, and typically, uh, we consider that uh, there are a lot of market bias, uh, behavioral bias, and uh, that's really coming from uh, our, my, my technical uh, experience. And what are the, the main focus of your presentation at the EFTA conference? The main focus of my presentation is to explain uh, what is what we name the risk factor. So the risk factor basically uh, is uh, the academic term to explain the uh, different uh, style of, uh, of the manager. So you should know probably the value investing style or the quality uh, investing style. That's uh, what has been uh, uh, has been put into the uh, factor or risk premium term. And the story is the, the following. It is uh, the, the, the factor uh, principle has, has been developed and uh, had a very uh, strong development in, uh, in the academic uh, part and in the business uh, part as well. Um, because it was a, a kind of a, 
improvement of the initial uh, CAPM uh, theory with uh, market beta. The idea of uh, Pharma in French in uh, 92 was to consider that uh, the market beta was not uh, was not uh, what was probably to 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 was was not enough to explain uh, portfolio performance. So uh, they consider that the risk factor was a good way to explain uh, the bulk of uh, portfolio performance. So adding uh, to to the to the market beta, adding a beta coming from value, a beta coming from quality, a beta coming from uh, the size effect. Uh, was a very good way to explain the bulk of the market performance. And at the end, we, we have seen some, uh, some, uh, some papers explaining that uh, uh, Warren Buffett performance, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett performance uh, can be explained just by beta exposure. So uh, at the end, uh, there were suggesting that uh, Warren Buffett didn't add any alpha uh, to the portfolio. It was just beta, a beta on value, beta on quality, beta on low volatility exposure. Uh, but uh, the, the, the beta uh, disappeared. So that's uh, the idea. It means that uh, if you can explain the performance of uh, any um, portfolio through beta, you kill the alpha. There is no more alpha in the market. And then uh, you can explain that uh, uh, financial analysis, behavioral analysis, technical analysis, of course, uh, are not useful at all because you are not able to, to add alpha. Uh, what you do eventually is just beta. Okay, so that's a, a, a very strong finding. However, uh, what is, uh, you know, devil is in the details. Um, what uh, I, uh, we, we can observe is that in the five factor models of the family French, they just forgot to add two factors, uh, two styles which are very important uh, in the industry. The and first one. Can, can we uh, uh, re clarify the, the first yeah. in, and then the five in total? That would be great. Uh, excuse me, uh, Aaron. Uh, uh, the, the five factors that you mentioned, uh, with the two that are uh, additional ones, what, what are they in total? What are they in total? Uh, the, it is value on site, that's uh, the two. Uh, and then they, they beat five, five factor models uh, with uh, an investment factor uh, and a profitability factor, which is, uh, let's say, very close to the quality uh, factor. Uh, in fact, in the industry, it's more the quality uh, term which is uh, taken. Uh, and, uh, uh, however, no, 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 no mention of uh, low volatility and no mention of uh, momentum. And the point is that, uh, of course, momentum is really an issue for academics because if you accept the fact that there is a momentum, it means that there is some information, let's say the information of today will have an impact on the, the price of tomorrow. So that's the momentum. The, the very and definition it, of a trend. Yeah, exactly. And uh, if you accept that, it, is, uh, it, it really contradicts uh, the hypothesis of, uh, uh, of the efficient market theory, which is market are random, so there is no information coming from past. So that's, uh, let's say, impossible to include uh, momentum in such uh, in such equation, uh, because uh, if you accept momentum, uh, you contradict uh, the C so the CAPM uh, theory. Uh, uh, while in the meantime, you try to. Uh, to reinforce the CAPM theory. So it's uh, very paradoxical. So that's why momentum is not in, uh, in the five factor models. Um, the, the other one is the low volatility uh, factor. This one is very interesting because uh, uh, 
you, you, you have probably uh, uh, learned that uh, there is no freelance, meaning that uh, for any additional risk, you are paid for that. You are paid for taking additional risk. That's very simple. Uh, and that's why you have this uh, famous uh, curve uh, of, uh, of the CAPM uh, linking uh, more risk with more return. Uh, that's uh, the efficient frontier. Uh, so that's very simple. But uh, the facts are very problematic because low volatility uh, anomaly, so that the term is very interesting. Uh, academics mentioned the low volatility anomaly, uh, suggesting that uh, uh, the low volatility stocks have better returns than high volatility stocks, which is exactly the opposite of the uh, of the portfolio uh, theory. It is exactly the opposite, and. The point is that uh, the low volatility anomaly is not an anomaly. It is just uh, the fact you observe uh, that uh, very high volatility stocks uh, doesn't perform over the long term. They are very, uh, and let's say they are, most part of the time it is falling knives, uh, types of uh, very bad stocks, and uh, they don't perform. So it means that uh, potentially there are free lunch in, in the market. And uh, the point is that uh, low volatility is not an anomaly, it's a rule. And uh, consequently, it would mean that uh, CAPM is the anomaly. And let's say all this uh, uh, conclusion of academics with uh, CAPM or even with the five factor models is the anomaly because the, the the principles just don't work. Uh, well, strong and important um, insights, Terry. And, and <laughs> I'm just wondering. It's it's great to bring this out uh, in the presentation and, and at the conference, especially now with, with with so much change this year in 2020. What would be a, a current timely example of, of of exactly what you just said of of low vol, high vol, and and why understanding the false assumptions versus the reality, the market reality, uh, would, are, are so important? So uh, it means that um, typically uh, what we have observed this year uh, is that uh, there has been, uh, I don't want to mention the tech stocks, which is uh, uh, very specific, uh, but uh, the, the globally the stocks which outperform uh, have been the uh, quality stocks. So stocks like uh, the, the healthcare companies, uh, uh, let's say uh, the, the, the good industrial stocks, um, th that's the stocks uh, which outperform. And in the meantime, the, the stocks which uh, have been very volatile and which underperform uh, dramatically, uh, are typically the value stocks, the bonds, uh, the, uh, the, the, the automobile, the car makers. Uh, uh, of course, I don't mention Tesla because Tesla is not a car maker, uh, as everybody knows. Um, uh, but all this, uh, this type of company uh, suffer from a dramatic uh, sell-off uh, with very high volatility. And uh, that's just uh, the, 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 the consequence. Uh, you have a, a very high volatility because you have a, a huge sell-off. And uh, so it is not uh, stable companies. Uh, they are very fragile. And uh, in the other part, uh, the healthcare company, the quality stocks, uh, the business are very stable. So uh, there is no volatility, but there is very good performance at the end. And, and um, an additional word, if possible, uh, Thierry, the big age-old question about passive buy and hold investing versus active. This has been you know, a, a very strong market in terms of the bounce back from, from the March crash lows. And it, it, it's really kind of asking that question, where does that put the strategy of choice? 
Uh, it, 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 this point is uh, it, it's very interesting. So for, first of all, uh, it, it's probably not the same thing to be in uh, Europe or to be in US. In US, as you know, there has been a very uh, significant concentration on uh, on a few few stocks, uh, the, the famous uh, Fang uh, stocks, uh, which means that. At the end, uh, yes, uh, the S&P 500 or the Nasdaq uh, strongly outperform uh, the bulk of uh, the, the equity funds. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, what we can consider is that uh, the, um, uh, these market indices are probably much riskier than uh, a normal portfolio. So we are just looking at uh, uh, one part of the story, which is the return, but there is another part of the story, which is the performance as a whole, meaning that the performance uh, is looking at uh, returns, but also at volatility. So that's something which is uh, very often which is missed, and uh, I think is very important. Um, in the meantime, uh, what is true is that uh, we are clearly in, uh, in a world where ESG is coming is becoming uh, something uh, which is a priority for a lot of investors. And it is not compatible to have a passive investment and to have uh, ESG, uh, uh, ESG um, principle. Uh, you, you, let's say it's, it's not compatible because ESG means you have conditions and you want to implement this condition in the portfolio. So meaning that uh, you will have uh, a significant tracking error between the index, the market index based on market cap and your own portfolio, which is probably much more ESG compliant than the market cap. And, and, and just a, a, a final word um, to, to our audience, uh, Thierry. I know you're a big cycle man as well in, in terms of how you look at the world and how you look at markets. Uh, what, what, how important is, is cycle work and the stage of the cycle in the work that you're doing? Um, we, uh, we are, uh, it, cycles are very difficult because uh, they are, uh, by definition, they are not stable. And uh, it is always very difficult to, uh, to, 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 to catch uh, this instability. Uh, however, uh, there are a couple of um, uh, answers. The first one is that machine learning is a very interesting tool to, uh, uh, to, to react to these changes to the cycle. Uh, observation uh, much better than uh, the, the, the the human being uh, much better. The second uh, part of the cycles is the seasonality. Seasonality is uh, really something uh, strong in in the market. Of course, it's very unstable, uh, but uh, I would say it's coming every. Uh, most part of the time it's coming every year uh, and sometimes it's coming every month and uh, which is uh, w which means that uh, we can really use it uh, as soon as we are able to adapt to this uh, to this uh, instability thank you Thierry and any final words um, ahead of your presentation at IFTA so, uh, first I'm very happy to come back to the IFTA conference because uh, last time it was a couple of decades ago. So uh, <laughs> very happy to come back and uh, very happy to, to share these views on, uh, on, the, on factors, on the styles, uh, and to, re to try to, to reconcile uh, this factor analysis with technical analysis, because that's at the end, uh, the, the, the question is how uh, to use, to be able to use uh, the factor uh, definition with uh, a, a trading uh, with with the trading um, with trading. I, I agree with you, and I'm very excited about um, your contribution to the IFTA conference. 
hope to see maybe some of this work in, in our syllabus in the future uh, so that many new uh, investors and traders, technical analysts can, can adapt to the new future. Many thanks, Ron. Many thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thierry. Thank you.